The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all with your spirit. We offer this Mass for the repose of the soul of Billy Baker. My dear friends, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who never ceases to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us the fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Mary. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul sent for the elders of the church of Ephesus. When they arrived, he addressed these words to them. You know what my way of life has been ever since the first day I set foot among you in Asia. How I have served the Lord in all humility, with all the sorrows and trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I have not hesitated to do anything that would be helpful to you. I have preached to you and instructed you both in public and in your homes, urging both Jews and Greeks to turn to God and to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now you see me a prisoner already in spirit. I am on my way to Jerusalem, but have no idea what will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit, in town after town, has made it clear enough that imprisonment, imprisonment and punishment await me. But life to me is not a thing to waste words on, provided what when I finish my race, I have carried out the mission the Lord Jesus gave me. And that was to bear witness to the good news of God's grace. I now feel sure that none of, none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. And so here and now I swear that my conscience is clear as far as all of you are concerned. For I have, without faltering, Put before you the whole of God's purpose. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You poured down, O God, a generous rain. When your people were starved, you gave them new life. It was there that your people found a home, prepared in your goodness, O God. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. May the Lord be blessed day after day. He bears our burdens, God our Saviour. This God of ours is a God who saves. The Lord our God holds the keys of death. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you often 
tongue says the Lord, I go, but I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me when the glory I had with you, with the glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to, to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you. For I have given them the teaching you gave to me, and they have truly accepted this, that I came from you, and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, today in the readings we have two important or two key figures. In the first reading we have St. Paul addressing the people and in the Gospel we have Jesus addressing his disciples, praying for them. And there, there is a certain amount of similarity that exists between both these readings of today. And I say this on account of the words both these key figures utter. They are, they are on account of the completion of the mission that they were entrusted. Saint Paul, now who is going to be a prisoner in Jerusalem and in the future he will have to face death, he addresses his people and tells them that he was there on a mission to proclaim the one true God, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that they may believe. And he tells them that whatever he had to do, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he has done. In the Gospel, we find Jesus, after having served the persecution, after having died for his people and being resurrected, now on the verge of ascending into heaven, he prays for his disciples. And in this prayer, he mentions that he has completed the mission that was granted to him, the mission that was entrusted to him. With, with the Holy Spirit in him, he, full, he has fulfilled his mission. He has revealed God, his message, his good news to the people, to his disciples. Both these figures, my dear friends, Paul and Jesus, completed the mission filled with the Holy Spirit. They completed the mission of revealing the one true God, His message, His good news to the people. And now, now, with joy in their hearts, having completed the mission, they move on. Today, my dear friends, in the light of these readings, 
firstly we hand the gospel, it is imperative, it is a need for us to introspect as to what our mission is. Through baptism we have surely received the Holy Spirit. Through confirmation we have had the stirring of the Holy Spirit which, have, which has empowered us, which has burnt in us the fire, which has enlightened this fire within us to spread this good news. This is our mission. As believing Christians, we have a mission to spread the word of God, spread the good news wherever we are. My dear friends, the mission is clear that we spread the good news to everyone. And the question arises as to where we need to go, which part of the world we need to move. And often the notion that we have is when we speak about missions, we speak about geographical territories. We speak about those areas perhaps which have not heard the word of God. Those are indeed missions, my dear friends. But the mission, the notion of mission does not limit itself to geographical territory. The notion is a wider notion wherein all the world, every territory, be it urban, be it rural, be it one country or another, every part of the world is included in this mission. And wherever we are, we are called, we are invited to proclaim the word of God. This vitality, this vigor has to be always present in us that we have a mission. We have been granted the Holy Spirit so that we may speak, we may witness to God wherever we are. And if we fail in this mission, my dear friends, Christianity is sure to die. If Christianity has to survive, if Christianity will live, we need to acknowledge that we are on a mission. We are not here to sustain Christianity. We are here to spread Christianity to everyone. We are invited to speak about our Lord, about His good news, about His message to everyone. And we need to have this desire, this will, this vigor within us. And that is why the saints down the centuries and even Jesus says that he has come to cast a fire upon the earth. He has first of all enlightened us with this fire of the Holy Spirit that with this fire burning brightly within us we may go out into the world and spread the heat, spread the warmth of this fire to everyone. First of all we need to feel the warmth of this fire. We need to be burning with passion. To spread the word of God. And when this passion is high, when we are truly alive with this fire, we will have the desire to move out and wherever we may be, then to spread the word of God. This is an invitation to each one of us, my dear friends, every believing Christian who has received baptism, who has received the good news, to take this good news to everyone we come in contact with. And this we need to acknowledge in our lives. As we partake in this Eucharistic celebration, let us pray, let us ask the grace of God, especially the Holy Spirit, that we may be missionaries wherever we are. Wherever we are. And wherever we are, we may proclaim the good news. We may have a desire to always, every day, every moment to proclaim this good news to everyone. May God bless us with His Holy Spirit. May His Holy Spirit always be burning within us. And may the warmth and light of His fire spread, His good news spread to everyone on earth. Bless thy Lord for all creation, but in your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Bless the Lord for a God of creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending name of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a new ball, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you all the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the home of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us say this command and form by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having fed upon this heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of Saint Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.